Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Joan, and welcome to Custody Matters Live. Today, I have a special guest. Her name is Martha LaCroix, and her big platform, the thing that's important to her, is suicide prevention. And I thought, this is what a perfect topic to really discuss during this global pandemic, this, this global uh, isolation kind of thing, um, but to, to bring up uh, how people are impacted in regards to their mental health. Welcome, Martha. Hi, Danica. It's so nice to be here with you this morning, at least morning on this side. Right. Well, you know, the thing I, actually, I was feeling it. I was feeling the, you know, I walk every day and, um, and even though it feels like my regular routine hasn't terribly changed because I work from home and, and all that, I, I'm feeling that, that, that just that low grade sense of, of, of depression, maybe a little bit of anxiety and stuff like that. And, and of course you are, you are an advocate for suicide prevention globally. And so you probably get it more than I, even my own experience. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, right now um, I um, am doing a, uh, creating a worldwide event to wipe out suicide globally by 5% each year beginning 2021. And I've been traveling around to different countries to get them enrolled. And I was amazed at, uh, I didn't know what I would find when I got there, uh, but I wanted to just get the feel of each country on their response to this subject. So I would go to like the American embassy um, uh, that represented in France and, and the uh, countries that I was visiting. And uh, sometimes I couldn't get in. And, um, but I would tell the guard what I was there for and the, the public policy people, they would come out to me, public affairs would come out to me because they were that interested in the subject. So it let me know that this is uh, something uh, that the world uh, realizes needs to be addressed. Um, you know, something I didn't put in is, yeah, like suicide is, is some, there's a lot of reasons why people even consider suicide. And one of the reasons I had you on this show, Custody Matters Live, is when people are going through high conflict custody situations, when they don't have a loving relationship with a child, and especially when it's not even, it, like they try, they try, they try, and they're met with like even a toxicness from their underage child. Um, yes. You know, that can really have people feeling desperate and, um, and trigger people's, you know, that as a possibility. Yes. And when they don't, when, a, if I, I, when someone doesn't have anyone to talk to and they're feeling like uh, their support base has been threatened, what does a child do if they don't know who to talk to? And that helpless feeling, um, I know there were times as a child I felt like that, just helpless. I didn't, it, and it, did, it didn't mean that I wasn't loved and didn't mean that, um, uh, uh, that I couldn't talk, but there was something inside I didn't know how to express because uh, when you're young, you don't know all the times what you are feeling or how to express yourself. So I, uh, going, dealing with this uh, suicide prevention event, I came, became present to, I don't care where you go, everybody is feeling the same way. We're all alike. We, we're different, but we're alike. Everybody needs someone to talk to. Everyone has times where they feel completely helpless and everyone, um, uh, Everyone has needs and uh, that need to be addressed in this area. So um, I was so glad I went and I talked to everybody. 
about it. The cab driver, I loved the youth. I was able to talk to them. Some of them were touring around for different kinds of projects, uh, uh, for AIDS and what have you. And I really could get in their heads and they got into mine. And I could see uh, how open they were uh, to my conversation. And they would share different things with me on what they were going through. Uh, and I did have a young man uh, come up his, his uh, 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 I couldn't sleep. You know, when you're in Europe, we're a, a completely different cycle. So I was in a daze most of the time. But I was in a public space where uh, the children were, oh, they were in there having a good time. And if I were younger, I would have done the same thing. But I was there uh, preparing my notes for the, summarizing the, the, day, uh, the day's events or the accomplishments I had done that day. And a young man came and just plopped himself at my desk, at my chair, uh, table while I was writing. And uh, I knew he had been drinking, you know, so I just kept writing. I didn't even look up. And he uh, um, was obnoxious, you know. And, he, and I, uh, he said, well, what, what are you writing, you know? And I didn't even look up. I just gave him the uh, pamphlet that I had on the subject matter. So he stood up and he was still reading it and he plopped back down in his chair and he said, thank you. And I, I, I didn't understand what he was thanking me for. I, I didn't get, so that's when I first made eye contact with him. And uh, he asked me for more of the details about Here's to Life Global. And I began to share it with him and he stopped me and as loud as he could said, I don't wanna hear all that and he used a lot of words, little, you know, I won't mention here, but I don't wanna hear all that. Uh, be upfront with me, I, I don't hear that garbage. And it kind of <laughs> startled me. And I said, mm, this guy is really hurting. So I had to regroup in my head and get from writing and uh, get where my space was and get into him and really listen to what he was saying. He was just disgusted with himself and with life, just disgusted. And he wanted to have a real conversation with someone who really heard what he was saying. And when I got it present and I became vulnerable to him and he could respond by hearing where I was in my head that I could relate to him. And uh, then I discovered that uh, he was 19 years old. He was the son of uh, diplomats. And he, he said, I was planning to uh, commit suicide tonight. And this conversation uh, saved me from doing that. Wow. And it became present to me how, how these youngsters are going around with nothing to believe in. They're, they have this void. And uh, when parents are divorcing or they, they lose that and they're already feeling void, that has to be a huge challenge for a child yeah there's no there's no safe space i know with many of our our viewers that um they're dealing with that they're targeted parents they're they may be the non-residential so right now during this quarantine even if they had regular access to the children um they may not have may not have it and so now being targeted parents they're completely, these children are completely absorbed in an environment that does not support them having a relationship with their other parent. So they have to hide their love. They have to, they, there's no safe space for them to share that they really do love the other parent. Um, yeah. And it's, and like, like what I'm hearing, Martha, you, you talk to this guy and you actually got that all the ugliness was just an indication that there was some sort of pain inside yes. of him and he was not really, nobody was really listening to him. Yes, yes. And, and, and I was a little embarrassed with myself because I said, I'm out here enrolling countries to, uh, uh, to be aware of suicide prevention and the 
the global event we want to do, I was all in the logistics of it. And I wasn't present to what I was there, the essence of what I was there to do with someone sitting right in front of me that wanted the conversation. So I had to, I had to go from the one part of my brain that was there for one thing, but really listen to the, the, the reason why we, were, we are putting together the event, the, the program. This is why we're doing what we do. And I think, I think we can get lost in that. We can get so into uh, uh, organization and fundraising and all of that and miss the point. And yeah. the point is we've got to save these children. And the yeah. point is when your parents are, are splitting up, and, and, and this is what I want to say so much to Parents, do not talk the other person down have a positive attitude, whatever's going on between you personally, that's one thing. But it really tears a child apart to to down to play down or to talk down the other parent. It they, they have enough to go through and then you're giving them that too and, and making them take sides or whatever. But but the I, uh, the suicide rate is increasing at a, an alarming rate, I want you to know, among youth. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among ages 15 to 29. So I want everybody to be present to that. That's huge. Here's a statistic I got. Uh, worldwide deaths from January 1st to March the 25th. Um, just to have a little, okay, so seasonal flu. I'm not going to give you all the statistics of coronavirus, but seasonal flu, we lost 100 and 13,000 people uh, during that period of time. Um, and suicides, we lost 249, almost 250,000 people by suicide since January. And, and globally, it's 800,000. Yeah. It's, globally. And, and I, I, you know, a lot of it is just, um, you know, with, with kids, they do when they, um, I, I know, I don't know if you're familiar with the ACEs study, um, adverse childhood events or experiences. And, and there's a way of determining how many points your child scores on the ACEs. And basically the higher the number, the, the more at risk they are for suicide, for, for um, you know, drug abuse, for all of these horrible things that we, we don't want on our children. Um, you know, you said something that uh, do not talk badly about your, the other parent to the child. Don't, the child should never know how, that the, the other parent didn't pay child support and that's why our lights are uh, getting turned off. Like, in an intact family, it's like both parents have each other's back and they do not want the child to feel um, insecure or vulnerable because of the, the financial whatever struggles that the, the parents are going through. But it just seems like when, they're, when things are split, it's like all that is off. I can make the other parent look bad um, by you know, throwing them under the bus with the children. And, they don't, it may satisfy an immediate gratification for yourself, but if you knew that every time you let that poison come out of your mouth, you're actually putting the child closer and closer to those risky things. And, um, amen, Danica, I, I'm, I'm, and you see it all the time and you, and, and you, you feel at least for me, I feel helpless when, uh, to watch a youngster go through that. And I don't know, I don't know how to help them, you know? Uh, it's, so I love what you're doing in your organization to make people present to that. And, and with, this, with this virus going on, we're seeing in other ways how blame things are happening. And right now, it, 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 it all is connected. We have to come together we have to stop finding uh, making people wrong mm -hmm. and come together on something that will kill us if we do not and i'm so appreciative again for the work you're doing because it 
what all of it is, is that we have to love each other, forgive each other, and, and, and don't carry around a lot of resentment and weight and finger pointing because it does not do any good. It only tears it down. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'll tell you when somebody is making me wrong and saying, you should do this and you should do that for, for if you were a good parent, you would have done this yes. for our children. Like that does not create the desired effect. If you want your other, your co-parent to, to, uh, to be more responsible or whatever, whatever, uh, you got to like resist the urge to judge and say, how can I support you? How can I, and that's what I've written in my co-parenting course is yeah. making, uh, having the, the, the person who's doing the course write a letter, whether they send it or not is irrelevant, but writing a letter to their co-parent to say how, this is what I, you can count on me for. You can count on me for making sure that I, you know, I'm on time, uh, the kids are well fed, they're, you know, I, I can, I'm, a, I'm just a phone call away. Those things would really, that feels like, okay, we're on the same team raising our children. Obviously yes. did, the relationship didn't work, but we can still, we, I mean, <laughs> really that's the one thing you do have in common with your co-parent yes. is yes. there's that child is truly the love of your life. Yes. And that's, that's mutually the love of their life. Um, yes. And that's kind of how we have to see it. And, yes. um, but it, it, otherwise, the other way is not going to help. Like, yes. you know, you were speaking of judging. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I was, I, you know, I was walking, I do my daily walk. And, um, and then you see on, on Facebook, you see these people posting, uh, making people wrong for walking and not isolating. And I say, I, I get what you're saying that people are just like, if you just would stay in your house, we could all get through this a lot quicker. That, um, that may be true, but you've got to really understand what the other person is going through because mm -hmm. in regards to having tenant, you know, that, that feeling of isolation may be pure bliss for some people, but mm -hmm. for other people, it may be absolutely um, confronting. To be and that isolation is so uh, uh, present uh, to, it's all a part of uh, suicide prevention. <laughs> isolation is one of those main components uh, uh, that people go through when contemplating suicide, they, it's, it's, they isolate, they have a tendency to isolate. And I love what you said when the, the word actually calms the spirit down, when you approach somebody and say, how can I support you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it automatically takes a big burden from one's shoulders just to hear someone say, how can I support you? Yeah, and, and if you're them. if you're not there uh, in being able to like authentically say how can I support you, that means yeah. there's work to be done on a personal level. And yeah. I get, man, I can give you many examples of of how toxic people can be. Um, yes, and you're just so triggered, so triggered by like the last thing I want to do is to help this other person. Yes, yes. And I, I, I think about this time where we are um, isolated and uh, um, it, it, it truly is a time we can reflect mm -hmm. and take a breath and just see where we have some things missing because we got so busy and preoccupied in other things that we may have missed opportunities to uh, talk and bond with our families and communicate because we are just so busy. Well, now look, everything shut down. And now we ha have to get reacquainted with each other. This is a wonderful, what is, uh, replace the fear with an opportunity for yeah. getting uh, reacquainted and for, actually finding out 
actually having conversations with our relatives and friends to see where they are in their heads. We, someone may be close to us thinking about suicide, we don't even know it. Um, people come out the door, you know, they're all dressed and happy looking, but we don't know what's going on in their heads. And we don't know that unless we have a conversation. So this, we can use this now, you, we're talking this way, uh, others are, are having more communication. This is good, this is, there's good that's coming out of this. We know, this, we know, but there is good that's coming out of this. I'm seeing, um, like, I, uh, like getting together, I've had these virtual dinner parties, virtual happy hours with friends, and friends that I haven't really made the time for in a very long time. And, um, you know, it, I invite family, I invite friends that are several states away. It's been like, wow, now I, I have in my mind, where, who do I want to go and visit? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, really yes, great. yes. And, I, and I'm glad for the, I hope, I hope we can get uh, the youngsters to kind of hear uh, how we feel, that we genuinely love them, that nothing that they're going through, we haven't felt uh, or, or knew someone who was going through at the age they are, that um, we had to come through some things to get to, get to where we are, uh, a place of balance and peace and love. And it just doesn't happen overnight. And we have to learn to be patient with each other. And even as we grow older, some people have been able to develop that more than others. And that we're all here together. And we don't know everything. We don't know everything. And the love is what gets us through when, we, when we've made our mistakes. The love is what causes us to forgive and let go and keep moving, knowing that someone genuinely loves us. That's right. And it doesn't have to come from the birth parents because there's some parents that they are missing or whatever. It doesn't have, just take the love, the genuine love where it is offered, the genuine pure love, take it where it's given. And some people get, children, they, they get so hung up on feeling that this person should love me like this. And it's not necessarily going to come that way. But yeah. oh my goodness, when you get through it, you can go out into the world and help others. That's what we're here. I believe everything we go through is so that we can take it, overcome it, and go through it, go about our lives and help others to get through it. That's, I think that's why we're here, really. So whatever pain you have, Danica, uh, uh, through, that made you create this organization, made you now share it and my goodness it's so needed yeah it's i think it's important you know just being a light being a light to the world yes it, and in you know everybody has their way of being a light but you know you if you aren't a parent if you have uh nieces and nephews and and you can be a light to them you yeah. can actually speak into their lives things that their parent that they they're they're so parent deaf that they can't hear what their parents are saying but that means that you have an opportunity to, yes. to share i want to share with you i want to share i'm going to share the screen um, for what your project is here's to life it's the global concert in aliveness forum a tele telethon weekend so tell us it's good um it's may the 8th and the 9th um, in next year. Next so year. Tell us a little bit about what, what is that going to look like? I mean, you've traveled all over the world um, to get partnership. To, uh, say something about that. Well, we're, we want to we do something similar to live aid, depending on where our pandemic ha has us. Uh, regardless, we are going to approach it several different ways, but we've, we've enrolled several countries to do a live concert, to promote suicide prevention, and then uh, we're doing it uh, also in clubs, uh, restaurants, uh, churches, uh, in different venues in order to get the one point across that we want to reduce suicide by at least 5% per year. 
so that's the concert part. So it gets celebrities and, and entertainers from that culture, from whatever country that is, to be highlighted and promote this cause. Then the next one is the wellness forum. And we're getting nonprofit organizations that deal with some component of suicide prevention, like yours, you have a component there for suicide prevention. And we want to raise front funds for these organizations because what we notice is missing is they've got nonprofits out here and so much of the energy goes to raising funds and, and you know, usurps some of the energy to go to, into the cause upon which they were created, the, the organizations were created. And I want us to do something about that. If we all come together with a global umbrella of, of raising funds around the world and then these nonprofits can submit what they need, and then we can give them the support they need. And it would also be an opportunity for them to have exposure around the world on what their cause is, and there's so many different facets to it. It's for children, veterans, it was the elderly, what they do as they get older. It's, uh, it, it has so many components, so we wanna be able to have something to support that. And then the, the other component would be the telethon, and that would be where we'd have celebrities or, or world leaders to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people around the world uh, in order to uh, uh, give them uh, voices of encouragement and to uh, promote uh, uh, the, this cause for suicide prevention. Got it. Hey, something that I want to also share and... Uh, some people, and those of you who do, who do not know uh, Martha and what she does, I'm going to share another website that she has. She's quite the performer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I have looked at your stuff. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> you've got a, you, and it is this part of this, the telethon, will we be able to hear some of your beautiful work? Well, I had, I would tell you the truth. I've been so busy moving this along. I, I, I kind of lost myself as an entertainer because basically I am, and I had to figure this out. It took me years. So youngsters, it takes sometimes years to really find yourself. Mm -hmm. I am, I am a philanthropist. I'm an entertainer, philanthropist. But the cause is what I sing for rather than the singer first. So I, I sing to promote the cause, not, not just sing for singing's sake, if that makes right. sense. Oh, so, we, are, we are on the same page. I'm like that. I, went, I learned all kinds of skills, but uh, doing them for, the, for like, you know, doing graphic design or whatever, just for the sake of, of doing that, that doesn't light me up. What lights me up is, is to be able to use my gifts for yes. a higher purpose. Well, I love, I love, I love to to sing and be a performer, and uh, uh, but my 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 songs are around love and unity and things of that nature. That that's where my my soul is. But I I also uh, I want to use. I want for what this is that we're doing to move on beyond my life. Mm -hmm. It is, it, that's the, what I want. I want to get these uh, uh, projects uh, institutionalized because I have several of them and they're all dealing with inclusion of some kind in different kinds of ways. But I want to institutionalize these uh, good, they're, uh, they're just out of love. It's, it's not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to prove anything. It's a wonderful place in life to be. I just want us to have some, fill in the gaps of how we're not moving forward in the world and how people are yearning for things that they can get and don't know it's right there for them. And then I would like it to move on to the other, another generation after I go. I would, I would like that very much. I think, and that's the, the project that I'm working on, it, Guardians and Gatekeepers Conferences platform is the same thing. It's like, this is such, we, I, there are so many different family advocates that are doing their own thing. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not an expert at everything, 
But if I can connect everybody, bring yes. everybody together yes. in collaboration for the same, a similar purpose, yes. Yes. then yes. it just, it, um, that's what lights me up. It's yes, me too. Yeah. And I want us to get this. I, I see it everywhere in the churches, everywhere. Get this competitive thing out of there. We're one. Whatever we're doing is one. You can have your own individual organizations and projects, and we should support each other in them. We don't need to get into a competitive thing because it's all needed. So if we come as one, as one big thrust to move this one big thing forward, we can get the funds we need instead of constantly, individually working ourselves to death, trying to force. God owns all the money. I always say this all the time. God owns everything. <laughs> He's for the, 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 what, the, the, the religion that I practice. God owns everything. So why wouldn't we think that he would give us what we need in order to move goodness forward? It doesn't make sense to think he's not going to give us that. Well, I, we, I think in our minds, we, we have it, we create this separate, separateness. Yes. Like, um, like it's us versus them. And it is definitely rampant in family advocacy where it's us versus them because someone has hurt us and we have to, and as long as we create separateness and it's separateness with the lead advocates, it's yes. separateness in the family, it's separateness in the community or in religious organizations, yes. then yes. that serves no one. No one. And the churches, it's the same thing. The churches, they'll have uh, committees within the church and they're at odds with each other. <laughs> I just don't get this now. But it is, they're at odds with each other because they're competing within the church. This makes no sense. And the churches are not succeeding in many things because people are turned off by seeing that. Yeah, that's true. And, and, true. I, and I, and I, and, and I want to say, this is something we need to look at because the churches, at least in, in my community, in the culture I grew up in, they were the thrust to move things forward for good. That's where you went. That's yeah. how they all gathered. Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King's father stayed at our house growing up. He would uh, uh, preach at, uh, at our church every Sunday, uh, every anniversary, our church anniversary. And I, and I knew this history, I knew this culture. He, he was down the street from us when he got stabbed in New York. He stayed at, we called him Uncle Sandy, but he was Sandy Ray. He had a church down the street. My dad, dad was a minister. And I just, that's where the strength came from uh, in those churches. So now when we get uh, in, into these organizations, these churches, now they're bickering within, inside. They have a lot of inside competitiveness and it doesn't work mm -hmm. it just it does if we are one we're one right we're one definitely we're one. all right you know what we're, our time is up uh thank you so much martha for joining me on our show this week and, oh i'm gonna show you the t-shirt uh here's to life can you see here's it to life yes i see it it is your uh suicide prevention event that's global i'm super excited i'm actually i'm excited about joining the team and partnering with you um anything else anything else oh i had an idea and i'm going to just throw it in um is on my walk is i'm going to um reach out to i'm going to make i'm going to get those little you know those eggs those easter eggs those plastic easter eggs and i'm going to plant them in the city so that when people do their walks, they can pick them up. And, um, and inside, I, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out in my head, but put something, some, some sort of hopeful message that gives people a little bit of light in the day. Uh oh, I lost you. Hold on. You muted yourself. You muted. Ah, all right. Well, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Custody Matters Live. Uh, I will, we will see you again next week.